of questions to work at. But the one that's most important is the one that the undergrads put together because it's about the length of the exam that you'll see. Um, I prepared an answer sheet for it, so that's the process we do. You'll show up, I'll give you some exam questions and an answer sheet. We'll gently be back to the answer sheet, and everything that we do on the exam, everything answer goes directly on the answer sheet. So when you call time, I'm just collecting the answer sheet. And that's the last class, you can then take those questions home with you. It's as sharp as you're ever going to be until you go back over it again, so it's a good chance to do it. So practice it that way. Do it that way. I know that we don't always do sample exams that way. Sample exams are meant to be kind of a dry uh, test rehearsal. Re Same amount of time, no resources. You can look and do your book and your notes to answer the questions, but then it's certainly no purpose other than questions at the end of the chapter. You want to really put yourself in that moment the best you can. And everything that's going to be on that exam, we pretty much have talked about it, except for one reaction and a slight little tweak of something that you're opening up. So, that's really nothing new there. So, we'll talk more as things come go along today about um, other issues. The other thing is that we are going to have class tomorrow. We will be getting into material that will not be on the exam, but I will do my very best to make sure that everything that comes out of my mouth will be related to the things that will be on your exam life. Toolbox reagents, base, all the stuff that is at the core of what this course is about. What we have here in six, the day number seven is something that we should be able to recognize from when we left off last time. Or if we can't recognize it visually, that's the very last thing we talked about last time. And it will say that one thing you can't do with real craft calculation is create a carbon carbon bond between benzene and some deficient source. A part of how I basically and create linear alkyl benzene. And this is an example of a linear alkyl benzene, which means we can't make this through creative graphs. We have to have an alternative. And so what you're going to see in our notes that this problem is described and it has a very important restriction applied to it, but I'm just going to basically say at this point there are no restrictions to how you start this problem. Other than the mechanistic ideas of limitations, carbon atoms are not going to stay on a primary position if they can rearrange to a secondary. <coughs> Mechanism week number four is one that is pretty challenging because if I, if I erase this, I would never expect anybody to give me that from where we are right now. So because of that, there are certain pieces of information and clues that we can give you. Or we can just come out and say this is a mechanism question where you're not expected to predict. You're asked to explain and so all I'm asking you to explain here is explain the mechanism that is occurring during step number one only. So as you add this to this, there is going to be a change based on past experience. Past experience right there at the top. An acid in the presence of a double bond creates carbon cations, and carbon cations rearrange to the very best positions. But there is a limit to how much rearrangement we allow it to do, right? Say that a secondary carbon cation is not going to rearrange to a secondary, and it's certainly not going to rearrange to a primary in terms of what we would predict. We would certainly predict an acid and a double bond to create a carbon cation. There is no water in this system. One of the classic things that people will do is they will say, oh, acid plus means a trio plus. It doesn't. And this is toxic acid now, one of our stars from last time. We use toxic acid to make toxic for I one of our most important. Box reagents will be one, and the way we transform alcohols into better leading groups will see oxalates even here today as part of our review for tomorrow. So, all this is basically saying is sometimes the mechanisms you have to think about it almost synthetically, kind of like back to front. I know that this and this does, right? Because it's the last thing we did. So, the last thing we did is going to give us the final result. So, at some point, I know I have certain types of carbons here. That had the ability to oxidize under these heated conditions to produce the carboxylic acid. A new reaction to solve it. And that was introduced in our hybrid chapter 21 and 22, more specifically in the textbook chapter 21. So we know at some point the carbon atoms of this part are going to find themselves on the ring because the last step tells us that's what they must have been. We don't know that, but that's the only thing we can, we can infer that based on what happens in the so you have to come up with 
some kind of mechanism so that the molecule is in a position so that when this is treated with this, that can be your result. This is almost like that, that follow up spectroscopy problem that I gave you where I said, you can probably come up with four or five different molecules that agrees with the data. This is a result that I can make basically infinite. I was like, if the number of molecules I can treat the chromic acid with can be made that Close. So I'm dead about that. But I can all day long and come up with something that can provide us with that addition. But we don't have that molecule to work with. So within the confines of that original molecule, we can come up with a mechanism that, that agrees with the final result. Kind of like that. So these show two ways in which the isotopes of benzene can be made. And these functional groups that we know are carbocation tables with the appropriate condition. The first one, obviously, was an alkyl halide. Having a halogen stripped of the carbocation form means they rearrange. Or maybe the halogen is in a place where the carbocation won't rearrange like a secondary condition, which would provide these products. So, so we basically have said, you know, we need the micro triumph for three basic functional groups of synthesis of organic one. They should all be interrelatable with one another within one step. So they all can create carbon carbon, which means they're all capable of reacting with benzene to create carbon carbon bonds. The other carbon carbon bond forming reactions of organic one came from strong mass to acetylides, not with just the alkyl halide, but with the oxide. Water is a neutral nucleic bond that did not react with the oxide. Whether it was symmetrical or unsymmetrical, water just didn't react until the molecule became charged. Benzene is even less reactive than water, so it would need a very high charge too in order for the benzene to see that it's something worthwhile to react with. So if you have ethylene oxide and a strong acid like toxic acid, and you're basically put the proton on the little Santa hat, you're going to have the positive charge of oxygen, and now it's even more polarized so that not only water can change it and open it up, but benzene can do it. Mechanistically, it's no different than the other three reactions that we were talking about. Swing the gate open, create a carbocation, resonate it around, and make sure that if there's a group already on there, that it's directed where you go. If you have an exclusive meta director, this is no different than any other pre crass reaction. It won't work. Meta director on a benzene ring that has exposure to bromination conditions, chlorination conditions, nitrate, oh, what would those go? It's the pre crass reaction that we say does not go. And there are only two types. So Sometimes you might even see you know, the more traditional with this chapter, the aluminum trichloride catalyst being used to effectively charge the oxygen. Instead of an H on it, it will be an aluminum. That charged oxygen makes a more reactive ring for the weak benzene. You'll see, the follow up here is just to do what your toolbox asks you to do, is to go back and review epoxy chemistry. You know how an epoxide opens based on the nature of the nucleophile, especially if the epoxide that you have is not symmetrical. So the most important of the unsymmetrical epoxides is the other star epoxide. We have ethylene oxide and we have propylene oxide. These are all star obviously in the toolbox from view. So here again, the more reactive nucleophiles go to the easier accessible side. And the weak, sluggish, resistant nucleophiles need some assistance and some guidance, they need stabilizations, and they find that in the more substituted environment. So there's a, a parallel of an oxygen lone pair reacting to that of a benzene gate swinging open. And then after it swings open, you have to go dot, 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 and then you got to regain. That's, that's the game that benzene brings play. So with that reaction chemistry that was, again, described in the workbook, you know, you just let benzene do it now. Put all the same rules and restrictions and considerations of what the people have to offer. a certain type of carbon bond that you're adding on, or a certain type of carbon that you're adding on, sometimes the word will slightly change. So typically, if you have an SP3 carbon being added, those SP3 carbons are normally alkyl groups, and so we call them alkylations. If you have a different type of carbon, different type of shape, different type of surrounding environment, sometimes they do have different names, and we call that carbon carbon bond when you're adding something slightly different, such as this one. This is called real crafts acylation. So just the term acylation means that we are adding on an acyl group, like alkylation is adding on an alkyl group. So what is an acyl group or an acyl benzene is a carbonyl containing group. So the carbonyl containing group is replacing a 
some of them have direct paths to the benzenes, and sometimes you have to just do a series of manipulations. The most important one that we will see in this overall set of what real craft isolation is that a direct access to a ketone because of the nature of the group that we can throw at it. So if you look at the first reaction that we talked about with Lewis acid catalysts like aluminum trichloride and iron trichloride, what was the design? Bromy, bromy bond had a halogen ripped away, and now you got a Br plus. Benzene's going to go after the Br plus. That, that at least is the basic idea. And then the most recent one we did that involved the Lewis acid catalyst was looking at real craft alkylation. What you do there, we rip the halogen off and create a carbon back. Instead of a bromo plus, CO plus, it's now a C plus. The C plus can rearrange. If you add neighbors, bromo plus, CO plus can rearrange. It's a difference. And they will always rearrange to the best position. So here is another example. Don't worry about the Don't worry about the work up idea just yet. Don't worry about on your exam. I'll show you about your exam. It's not a consideration for us. It will become more important as we deal with some of the part future. So the lumen trichloride and the iron trichloride catalyst is used. It shouldn't do anything differently here because you have the same lettered group for the interaction. How is it? Put the halogen off the carbocation. And once you have that carbocation, you stick it on the benzene ring by replacing the hydrogen atom and doing substitutions. Make it, pack it, retain it. So that's what we're going to do here too. But we're not going to see overall anything fundamentally different. The only thing that's made the difference is the function. Created a carbon carbon bond, and we're using the most reactive carbonate containing group that we've already defined. What is the nature of the carbonate group overall? Let me actually say that. What is the function group that we have right here? What is that function group overall called? Yes. It's an acid chloride. Okay? It's the most reactive carbonate carbon that there is. And electron efficient carbons are beta carbons. So in our past, we had alkylate like oscillate as a beta carbon, we had epoxide as a beta carbon, and this is our newest class of carbon deficient carbons that can create carbon carbon bonds, the acid chloride. It's the king of the carbon bonds. How is the carbon acid chloride made? Well, this is an alkyl chloride, right? This is an alkyl chloride that was made from this. What is the blue box reagent that we would use? Here to make that. We know that it's all over this. So if I write the word fossil chloride, you'll know what it is. Fossil chloride, bionyl chloride, those words exist. But it's up to you, you're able to write it down. You don't have to write down letters. That's okay. Make sure you recognize the language too. If you look at the chemical stock room that I gave you in your workbook, there are no letters, or at least not very many. Most of it's just words. When you go into a chemical stock room, there are no labels of the structures on the molecule. They're just words. You go into a pharmacy, there's no structures. There's just words. So if you use thionyl chloride in theory, you will convert the alcohol into an alkyl chloride. If you take a carboxylic acid, meaning that we are making an acid chloride, 